I'm Ari Daniel Shapiro. This is the podcast of life, the story of Earth's biodiversity, one organism at a time. This time, sea cucumbers. They look like big, juicy, leathery bananas, just more colorful. They come in neon purples, rusty oranges, aqua greens, and pitch blacks, just to name a few. So we'll be talking about sea cucumber biology, literature, and gastronomy. That is, eating them. In fact, let's start there. I decided to go to a grocery store in Chinatown in Boston to see for myself. The seafood section was crammed wall to wall with tanks, each filled with a different type of crab, fish, or clam. I turned and spotted them immediately. A tray was perched on crushed ice. It held four black, foot-long, swollen, banana-looking things. Sea cucumbers. But I still double-checked with Sharon, one of the shoppers. Hi. Hi. Oh, do you know what this is? Uh, sea cucumber. Sharon says they're a special treat. You usually cook it when you try to celebrate something, you know, like a birthday or, or you know what, New Year's, you know, like Chinese New Year's. I always thought it was pretty tasty. <laughs> Chris Ma researches sea urchins at the Smithsonian. He ate sea cucumbers as a kid in San Francisco. So I called him up and asked him what they tasted like. It's like if you took some fat and melted it into jello and it was sort of this firm, gelatinous-ish material. So sea cucumbers show up in our stomachs. Well, for some of us. And they also show up somewhere else. Alex Kerr is a professor of marine biology at the University of Guam in the Western Pacific. But check this out. He's also keeping track of all the sea cucumbers that pop up in novels and poems, including John Steinbeck and Jack London. But my favorite is this one from Thomas Henry Huxley. I wish I were a holotheria and could get on without my viscera. I should do splendidly then. Did you catch that? He said, I wish I were a holothuria, which is another name for sea cucumbers, and could get on without my viscera, which means your guts. David Patterson, I'm Patty. who goes by Patty for short and works on the Encyclopedia of Life, told me a story to explain that line about the viscera. I was taken out onto the fringing reef around Fiji by a guy. He warned me about the black sea urchins because if you get the spine to those in your foot, it's seriously dangerous. And he picked up this thing, it was 18 inches long, black thing, three inches across, and he said, do you know what this is? And I said, hmm, that looks like a sea cucumber. And I said, well, I seem to remember that they can um, eviscerate, they can throw out their guts. And he grabbed the cucumber and he, he uh, whirled it around at me. And out of the back end came this massive spaghetti that ended up splattering all over me. And he said, like this? And I said, yes. This massive spaghetti is really sticky, and once it clings to you, it starts to contract. And so I'm stood there, and this stuff is now kind of contracting, and now my arms get into the side of my body, and then I can move less and less until I can just about move my fingers, and that's it, and I'm kind of stuck, trying to pick each of these little bits of spaghetti off my body. Now, the problem with that was not so much the sea cucumber, but trying to do all of this while standing on a coral reef, and I fell over, and what did I fall upon but one of the black sea urchins? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Patty was okay in the end. And so is the sea cucumber. Turns out it's one way they defend themselves. Once a sea cucumber shoots out its spaghetti-like guts and immobilizes the threat, it just inches away and slowly regrows what it lost. Check out eol.org slash podcast to see a Google Earth tour of what you just heard and to see photos of sea cucumbers in all their crazy colors. We'd also like you to submit your vocal impressions of what it sounds like when a sea cucumber squirts out its guts. So send those in too. Just go to the website, eol.org slash podcast. Mm-hmm.